I'm in my garden Monday afternoon, Easter Monday, and looking up at this beautiful blue sky, I saw the vague out outline of the moon. And it made me think of Palomar's uh, story adventure when he looks at the sky from Italo Calvino's Mr. Palomar. It's called Moon in the Afternoon. Nobody looks at the moon in the afternoon, and this is the moment when it would most require our attention, since its existence is still in doubt. It is a whitish shadow that surfaces from the intense blue of the sky, charged with solar light. Who can assure us that once again it will succeed in assuming a form and a glow? It is so fragile and pale and slender, only on one side does it begin to assume a distinct outline like the arc of a sickle, while the rest is all steeped in azure. It is like a transparent wafer or a half-dissolved pastille. Only here the white circle is not dissolving but condensing, collecting itself at the price of grey, bluish patches and shadows that might belong to the moon's geography or might be spillings of the sky that still soak the satellite, porous as a sponge. In this phase, the sky is still something very compact and concrete, and you cannot be sure where it is from its taut, uninterrupted surface that this round and whitish shape is being detached. Its consistency only a bit more solid than the clouds, or whether it is a corrosion of the basic tissue, a rift in the dome, a crevice that opens onto the void behind. The uncertainty is heightened by the irregularity of the figure that on one side is taking shape, where the rays of the setting sun arrive, and on the other lingers in a kind of penumbra. And since the border between the two zones is not sharply defined, the effect is not that of a solid scene in perspective. Rather, one of those little drawings of the moon on calendars, where a white outline stands within a little dark circle. There would be nothing to object to in this if it were a moon in the first quarter and not a full or almost full moon. This, in fact, is what is being revealed gradually as its contrast with the sky becomes stronger and its circumference is being more distinctly outlined, with only a few dints on the eastern edge. It must be said that the sky's blue is veered successively towards periwinkle, towards violet. The sun's rays have become red then towards ashen and beige, and each time the whiteness of the moon has received an impulse to emerge more firmly. And inside it, the most luminous part has gained ground until it now covers the whole disk. It is as if the phases that the moon passes through in a month were covered inside this full or gibbous moon, in the hours between its rising and its setting, with the difference that the round form remains more or less in sight. In the midst of the circle, the spots are still there. Indeed, the chiaroscuro becomes more distinct thanks to the luminosity of the rest. But now there is no doubt that it is the moon that bears them like stains or bruises and that they can no longer be taken for transparencies of the sky's ground, rips in the cloak of a bodiless ghost moon. What remains uncertain, rather, is whether this gain in evidence and, we may as well say it, splendour is due to the slow retreat of the sky, which as it moves away sinks deeper and deeper into darkness, or whether, on the contrary, it is the moon that is coming forward, collecting the previously scattered light and depriving the sky of it, concentrating it all in the round mouth of its funnel. And especially these changes but not, must not make us forget that in the meanwhile, the satellite has been shifting in the sky, proceeding westwards and upwards. The moon is the most changeable body in the visible universe and the most regular in its complicated habits. It never fails to show up for an appointment and you can always wait for it at the appointed time. But if you leave it in one place, you always find it in another and if you recall its face turned in a certain way, you see it has already changed its pose a little or a lot. In any case, following it steadily, you do not realise 
that it is imperceptibly eluding you. Only the clouds intervene to create the illusion of a rapid dash and rapid metamorphosis, or rather, to underline vividly what would otherwise escape the sky. The cloud dashes. Grey at first, it becomes milky and shiny. The sky behind it has turned black. It is night. The stars are lighted. The moon is a great, dazzling mirror that flies. Who would recognise in this moon the one of a few hours ago? Now it is a lake of shininess, spurting rays all around, brimming in the darkness with a halo of cold silver and flooding with white light the streets of the night walkers. There is no doubt that what is now beginning is a splendid winter night of full moon. At this point, assured that the moon no longer needs him, Mr. Palomar goes home. All about change, constant change. Have a wonderful Easter Monday. I'll read you another in a day or so when something makes me turn to the book and sit down and read to you.